This video is sponsored by Audible. Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. If you've ever listened to music from Latin America, you've probably noticed that it tends to be very rhythmically dense. There's lots of instruments playing lots of different parts with everything woven together into an incredibly rich tapestry of sound, but at the heart of it all, you'll often find two humble wooden sticks playing one of the most important rhythms in the history of music, and it sounds something like this. That's called a clave, or more specifically, a son clave. There's a couple different kinds of claves associated with different styles of Latin music, and we'll get to those in a bit, but first I want to make sure you understand just how important they are. Claves are very old. They likely originated in Africa and were brought to the Americas via the transatlantic slave trade. As far as I could find, we don't know for sure exactly how far back they go or how they evolved over those years. As you might imagine, academics of the time didn't devote much of their attention to studying the rhythmic structures of slave music. But given Given the clave's similarity to more modern African rhythms, it seems very likely they at least share a common ancestor. While claves are traditionally associated most strongly with Afro-Cuban music, the rhythm can be found across all sorts of different styles, even outside of Latin America. It shows up regularly in jazz, for instance, and it's also common in rock, where it's sometimes known as the Bo Diddley beat after it's used in the song Bo Diddley by the artist Bo Diddley. Really, if you listen to any sort of modern music, there's a good chance you've heard some version of it somewhere. So how does it work? Well, basically the clave is kind kind of like a wobbly metronome. Like in standard meter, we have regular quarter notes, where each beat lasts the same amount of time. It's completely symmetrical. Any one of these could be the downbeat and nothing would change. But with a clave, each beat is different, and if you change which note is the downbeat, you change the entire sound. Afro-Cuban music takes this uneven metronome thing very seriously. Not all parts play the clave, just like how you might not play every quarter note, but every part is built around the clave, filling gaps in between and emphasizing the rhythmic structure of the pattern. It's the foundation on top of which the rest of the rhythm is built. Heck, clave is literally Spanish for key, and scholars have compared it to the keystone of an arch holding the rest of the music together. So, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. But let's move on to the rhythms themselves. Probably the most common version these days is the son clave, named for its use in the son cubano style of music. This, like the other claves we'll look at, is a two-bar pattern with three beats in the first bar and two in the second. Notice that that second bar has nothing on the downbeat. The clave rhythm actually stretches across the bar line, obscuring the beginning of the second bar. This helps emphasize that it's one complete rhythmic pattern that just happens to take two bars to complete. Structurally, it starts out with these three evenly spaced notes, implying normal quarter notes at a faster tempo, but instead of continuing that pulse, it pauses for a second here, then turns around and plays these two fast notes before resetting. It creates a sort of lopsided feel where the tempo seems to keep speeding up and slowing down, and the rhythm lurches back and forth instead of proceeding smoothly. Shifting attacks onto unexpected parts of the bar is called syncopation, and it makes it much more interesting to dance to, providing a more complex structure with different patterns of emphasis to move along with. The other common clave patterns are the rumba clave and the bossa nova clave, both of which are effectively more complex versions of the song clave. Well, that may not be historically accurate. The rumba clave at least probably predates the song clave, although, again, the history is not well recorded. But structurally, at least, it looks like a variation, so for our purposes, that's close enough. If we look at the song clave, we see that of the five hits, four of them take place on eighth notes. There's this one lonely little sixteenth, but that's it. The other two claves each shift one of those eighths back a bit, creating a bit more syncopation to add some extra spice. The rumba clave moves this third note, which kind of moves it into the second half of the rhythm, even though it stays in the first bar, while well, the bossa nova clave moves the fifth note instead, mellowing out that rushed ending and creating a pattern that mathematicians call maximally even, where the notes are as evenly spaced as possible across the bars. We can also combine these two alterations to make what we might call a bossa rumba clave, Although, full disclosure, I found no evidence that anyone's actually used that rhythm. Still, it sounds nice. So those are the three main claves, but there's still plenty of different ways to use them. For instance, you may have noticed that in each of the examples we had a bar with three notes and then a bar with two. But what if we flip them and put the two-note bar first? This gives us what's called a 2-3 clave, as opposed to the 3 two ones we were looking at earlier. Note that traditionally, you wouldn't flip back and forth between them in a single song like I just did. Once the clave is set, you tend to stick with it. Again, it's basically a metronome, so changing it mid-song can be confusing. Of course, we can also make 2-3 versions of the rumba clave, 
and the Bossa Nova Clave, where you can really feel that maximally even spacing. Another thing we can do here is drop the two note bar entirely and just loop the three part like this. This gives us a rhythm called a tresillo, which is Spanish for triplet because it's the three note section of the bar. This can cause some confusion because tresillo is also used in Spanish to describe the rhythmic figure that English speakers call triplets, where one beat is broken up into three even parts instead of two. But in the context of Cuban music, tresillo usually refers to this slightly uneven version instead. To make things even more confusing though, actual triplets are also involved in clave theory. Or at least triple meter is, which is a rhythmic feel where every single beat is divided into triplets, and we can fairly easily transpose our claves into that feel. If we take the son clave, and drop the second sixteenth from each beat, we get this. which has basically the same structure, but in triple meter. We can do the same thing to the rumba clave, but you don't tend to see this with the bossa nova clave. It uses all the different sixteenths, so the conversion doesn't quite work. It's also much newer than the other claves, and as far as I could tell, these triple meter versions actually came first, so it makes sense from a historical perspective that the bossa nova wouldn't have one. So yeah, claves are one of the most important rhythms in music, and they show up all over the world. In Cuban music, they hold a special significance, serving as the foundation on top of which the rest of the piece is built, but the rhythms also see plenty of use in other cultures as well. I'd say experiment with them, but given how prevalent they are, there's a good chance that even if you didn't know it, you probably already have. Speaking of trying new things, let's talk about Audible. A couple weeks ago I made a video about how learning poetry could make you a better lyricist, and I got a lot of people asking for recommendations on how to find good poems. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, including plenty of fantastic poets, and the great thing about listening to audiobooks of poetry is that you can really hear how things like meter and rhyme schemes interact. A personal favorite is A.E. Houseman's collection A Shropshire Lad. Audible actually has three different readings of it, but I'd recommend the David Moore version. Plus they also have the complete collection of Shakespeare's sonnets if that's more your thing. Or you could get any other book you want. If you go to audible.com slash 12tone or text 12tone to 500500, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial membership, and a membership gets you a free book every month, which is yours to keep even if you cancel later, so basically it's just a free audiobook no questions asked. Plus, as long as you're a member, you can exchange your audiobooks for free too. So yeah, just visit audible.com slash 12tone or text 12tone to 500500 to get started. Again, that's audible.com slash 12tone or text 12tone to 500500. Thanks! And hey, thanks for watching, thanks to our Patreon patrons for making these videos possible, and extra special thanks to this video's featured patron, Doc. If you want to help out and get some sweet perks like sneak peeks of upcoming episodes, there's a link to our Patreon on screen now. You can also join our mailing list to find out about new episodes, like, share, comment, subscribe, and above all, keep on rockin'.